to all who are weary and need rest, to all who mourn and need comfort, to all who are lonely and need friendship, to all who are complacent and need disturbing, to all who sin and need a savior, to all who are called and would serve their fellow man, this church opens wide its doors and bids you welcome. Well, good morning and welcome to Rapidan Baptist Church in beautiful downtown Wolftown, Virginia. Happy 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. Because we always start with birthdays and sure enough, today is America's birthday. Of course, that declaration of independence didn't mean that independence had been gained. It was bought with a price. But also bought with a price that our founding fathers knew that their independence would be dependent upon God. It's a happy birthday, America. Other birthdays we had this week. On the 6th, that's Tuesday, none other than Miss Shirley Berry has a birthday. Happy birthday, great grandma. On the 7th, Jimmy Thurman. Jimmy Thurman has a birthday. On the 9th, Tracy Price. That's Friday, I believe it is. Tracy Price. And on the 10th, none other than Tyler Babin has a birthday. And I understand young Tyler's gonna be headed to Hawaii on a grand adventure on his birthday. Now I know that within the sound of my voice there are more birthdays, so this is also for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and many more. Yeah. Happy birthday, y'all. <clears throat> Announcements. Okay, next Sunday, 10 o'clock, right here at Rapid Inn Baptist Church, the Virginia Ramblers are coming to present the gospel through their gospel music. Oh, a good time's going to be had by all. I know there's some uh, refreshments afterwards. So come on out. Hear this local group singing praises to the Lord. Now, let's see. Other announcements we have. Of course, we're underway with our Kids for Kids. Uh, please, uh, if you have not done so, uh, we have a table out front where you can uh, pick up the information that you need. All it is is a pair of shoes for a kid that needs new shoes for school. Can also get hold of DD for more info. Now, let's see, uh, coming up on the 18th, none other than Deacon Paul Lutz will be bringing the message. Please come out to hear that one. It's gonna be a good one. And then the very next week, Deacon Joey Clatterbuck's gonna follow up along that same theme. So we really appreciate these deacons stepping up while D.D. and I are away. Uh, that's all the announcements I can think of this morning. Our story comes from the time that it was a kindergarten class. And the teacher was telling them about the, the meaning of the 4th of July. And she said that this is the day we all celebrate that we're free. Well, immediately, little Cindy jumps up and says, I'm not free. Teacher says, what are you talking about, son? Says, I, I'm not free. I just turned, I just turned four. Now, in the spirit of worship, Rapid Ann Baptist Church.
scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy. Be looking at chapter 8 and starting with verse 6. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. But beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statues, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold multiplies and all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God. Oh, may the Lord bless both the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Today is part two of where do we go from here? We started last week. Uh, today, our country will be celebrating a crucial moment in the history of our nation. 
the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And as we look at that event, we need to realize that it was a very dangerous decision for each man who dared to sign it. In fact, John Adams, as he signed, he said, whether we live or die, sink or swim, succeed or fail, I stand behind this Declaration of Independence. And if God wills it, I am ready to die in order that this country might experience freedom. Wow. John Adams. And it was that kind of patriotism which led men on with little more than a hunting rifle to engage in a battle with what was the greatest nation on earth, most powerful nation, and that was England. And this de decision to declare their independence from me, England was not easily or hastily gone into. Even though they lived in the colonies, they were still English citizens. And they felt that they should enjoy the same rights and privileges that any freeborn Englishman had. After all, it was their ancestors a few centuries earlier that had risen up against the unjust King John and forced him to sign the Magna Carta. Now, it's a history lesson. It was called the Great Charter. But for the first time, rights were given to the common man. And the king's power was limited. But old King George, King George over just a few years forgot all about that when it came to the colonies. It wasn't long until oppressive taxes and regulations were beginning to make their lives miserable. And when they complained, King George sent troops and declared martial law. Public protests were put down by force. And get this, dissenting voices silenced. Hmm. Dissenting voices silenced. Hmm. That's not happening today. Uh, and more laws which they considered intolerable were enacted. Sometimes things got out of hand, especially in Boston. One day a crowd was yelling at a royal tax collector. And he fired at him. Killed an 11 year old boy. 11 days later, soldiers were trying to break up another protest. Somebody commanded the fire. Five of the protesters died. And the news spread quickly about this Boston massacre. And just 14 months before the declaration was signed, armed conflict broke out in the Battle of Lexington and Concord. In that day, 366 folks were either wounded or killed. Now, it was during this time of conflict that Patrick Henry, the fiery patriot from what state? Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. The fiery patriot from Virginia gave his famous speech before the Virginia Provincial Convention. And here's how he concluded his speech. Now many of you may have had to memorize this in school. He ended by saying three million people armed in the holy cause of liberty and in such a country as that which we possess are invincible by any force which our enemy can send against us. Besides, sir, we shall not fight our battles alone. Get this, there is a just God who provides over the destiny of nations and who will raise up friends to fight our battle for us. The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. It is to the vigilant and to the active and the brave. Besides, sir, it is now too late to retire from the contest. There is no retreat, but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged. Their clanking may be heard on the plains of Boston. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war has actually begun. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it the gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be bought with the chains of slavery? 
I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Wow. Hmm. Many of our forefathers paid a terrible price in the Revolutionary War. A price but they, they were willing to pay for victory so that generations to come might be citizens of this land of the free and the home of the brave. But what we so often forget these days, quite conveniently I might add, is that in declaring our independence from England, our forefathers made an equally bold declaration of dependence upon God. That's what I said, you heard me correct. A declaration of dependence upon God Almighty. In the very beginning of our nation, our forefathers declared just that. But we weren't the first nation to do that. At another crucial moment in history, as the people of Israel were preparing to enter the land that God had promised them, Moses told them, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord, your God, for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord, your God. And our founding fathers were careful to remember him. The second paragraph of the Declaration, again, probably memorize this. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their who? Creator. Oh, yeah, God. Endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. And again, the closing words of the Declaration states, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. That's God. We mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And beloved, it's so important that we remember this clear declaration of dependence upon God. For in a time of turmoil in our nation today, it seems that strong efforts are being made not only to ignore but even to eliminate any acknowledgement of the deep and abiding faith that our forefathers had. And the God who gave this nation its birth and its greatness. I love reading about Patrick Henry and George Washington and John Adams and Thomas Jefferson and all the many other patriots who gave of themselves you know, so boldly so that we might enjoy our freedoms. But we also need to be reminded of the solemn warning that God gave to another nation, and that's Israel, which was experiencing the thrill of independence after centuries of slavery in Egypt. Although it was written over 3,400 years ago, this warning can very well apply to our country today. In our scripture lesson this morning, turn back there with me if you will. It's Deuteronomy 8. This is a good one to highlight. Remember. Verse 7. Now Moses told the people, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing. Hmm. Does that remind y'all of any country that you might know of? In verse 10 it said, When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. Then continuing in verses 11 through 14, Moses warned them, Beware lest when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God. Now Dr. J Der David Jeremiah refers to this passage as God's warning to his people about the dangers of summertime living. He called it summertime living. 
the dangers of forgetting about God in the good times. You see, the greatest danger in the summer of life is forgetting who is truly responsible for the good life that we enjoy. And beloved, if you're in one of life's summers right now, a time when things are going well, what evidence in your life is showing that you're continuing to live by faith? Let thanksgiving to God be always on our lips in every season. James 1.17 tells us every good and perfect gift comes from God. Beloved, it's absolutely essential for us as Christians to stay close and to stay grateful to God in all seasons. In fact, I'll borrow from Thomas Paine's words I shared with you last week. I'm going to change him up just a little bit and let him read this. These are the times that try Christians' souls. That the summer faithful and the sunshine Christian will in this crisis shrink from their dependence upon God. What we obtain too cheap we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper price on its goods. Beloved, you see the testimony of history has made it abundantly clear that not only nations but individuals as well need to heed that warning. The greatness of a nation is not measured by its military power or national wealth. Righteousness is a determining factor. Solomon, the wisest of all men, Proverbs 14.34 says that righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. What's happening in the United States today? I mean, to a great extent, our modern objectives have become success and status and security. Oh yeah, and let, let's not forget peace. Patrick Henry's words are echoing through the ages, aren't they? Peace, peace. But there is no peace. He borrowed that from Jeremiah 6.14, by the way. And these objectives are followed closely by self-indulgence and comfort and pleasure. On the 4th of July, we gather and sing all of our favorites about freedom, don't we? Yet sometimes, sometimes, mind you, our proclaimed freedom has become the very thing that enslaves us. Titus 3.3, 3, Paul says, At one time we were foolish, disobedient, deceived, entangled by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Whew, let me ask you something. Have you ever known our nation to be more greatly divided than it is today? Beloved, this is the enslaving and deceiving nature of sin. People who are caught up in sin think they're free, but in reality, they're enslaved to it. Go to the fellow on the street holding his brown bag and tell him that you can be set free from alcoholism. You say, I'm not a slave to anything. Give me my bottle back. Prodigal son came to his father and said, I want to be free. Give me what is mine. Then he wandered into the far country saying, I'm free. I'm free. But his freedom was short-lived. What? His friends left him when his money ran out. Imagine that. And he found him slave, self enslaved to a Gentile taskmaster and a group of hogs in a hog wallow. It was not until he came back to his father that he was truly free. So we stand back and look at the, this land of the free and we begin to wonder, is there any real freedom anywhere? But thank God as Christians, 
We have a greater freedom than any constitution can grant us. We have the freedom that is offered in Jesus Christ. You know there's a word for freedom in the New Testament. It's a great word. It's redemption. Redemption. Redemption means set free. It means that we've been bought with a price. That we've been freed from our bondage. And now we're truly free. In Paul's letter to Titus, he tells us that we've been set free from the bondage of sin. For the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. And to live self-control and upright godly lives in the present age. Jesus Christ gave himself for us to redeem us to purify us for himself so as we celebrate again the birth of our nation please pray that our country might have a new birth of freedom not a freedom from God but a freedom built upon God also may each one of us as individuals Reaffirm our dependence upon Him. So that looking unto Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith, we might experience that freedom that He gives. Not only from worry and doubt and fear, but also from all those sins which so do so easily beset us. Oh, beloved, hold it tight to our freedom in Christ and declaring our dependence upon Him then we can sing with new fervor, can't we? That beautiful prayer that we began the service with. God bless America. Land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. Oh God, please. Please bless America land that I love that, that we love my home your home please bless us let us pray Heavenly Father ooh, we just pray this morning Lord each and every one of us we just pray that our nation would come to know without a doubt that the freedoms that we have are certainly not free. And the freedoms that we have as Christians are certainly not free. Rather, they were bought with a price. We bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. And he took those nails meant for us. Dear Lord, our verses in the past weeks have told us that, you know, in Christ we can be truly free. May that be our prayer this day. And we pray that you would bless our nation, Lord. We again pray that for our leaders that they would, they would turn to you. That they would humble themselves. Dear Lord, that they would hit their knees. Each one of us would hit our knees. Dear Lord, we just pray this morning, if anyone here does not know you, dear Lord, that they've been holding back. Dear Lord, your word is making it clear that time is short. We just pray that they may find you while you may be found. Lord, again, we thank you for each one gathered here. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.
Thank you again for joining us here at RBC. We always appreciate it when you take the time to do so. We're praying that you'll have a happy and safe 4th of July. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. All oh, that peace that passes all understanding. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it's in his name we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. Jesus.